Today, on View Nidilidon, a video brought to you by the Mark 1 Human Eye, all about how evolution gave us the Mark 1 Human Eye through a process of accident and competition demonstrated with optics. Our vision began billions of years ago in a world of perceived darkness with single-celled organisms and their quest for energy. The most abundant source of energy on the Earth was sunlight. And organisms that could find the source of energy more easily had an advantage for survival over those that didn't. As multicellular life started to gain complexity, so did the arrangement of cells that could detect light. Here I have a flat white piece of material that will represent the early patches of photosensitive cells. As shown, this flat photosensitive region does not give much information about the source of light. Some detail in its intensity and rough source of direction, but that's about all. It's better than nothing, and nature kept randomly adapting. One of the adaptations in nature was to take this photosensitive region of cells and curve it outwards. This improved the organism's ability to detect the location of light. Another adaptation to this photosensitive region of cells was an inwards curve. This also increased the organism's ability to detect the source of light much better. However, if you look in the center, you will notice a little bit more information about the source of light, which is important. It was the inwards curve that became another stepping stone towards human vision. This leading onto what would be the retina in the back of our eyes. This optical arrangement allowed for more than one source of light to be easily tracked at the same time. This also helped organisms avoid predators as well, which increased chances of survival. Both of these curves became more pronounced as time went on. The outer curve began to take a more spherical shape, allowing light to be detected better along multiple orientations. Here's what some of the earliest outer curve vision could detect. Information about the light's intensity and its direction on more than one axis. After this, a new ability formed, and that was the ability for photosensitive cells to distinguish different wavelengths of light. This type of eye later on evolved to develop into many different types, such as the compound eyes on insects, but that's a different type of vision for another video. The inwards curve also continued to evolve, giving organisms a better ability to detect the source of light and its intensity. These eyes also began to have the ability to detect and differentiate between multiple wavelengths of light. Here's where our sense of color came from. Another point in our evolution was the iris, which gave our eyes the ability to control the amount of light entering to this photosensitive area. This also had a secondary effect, which was an increase of visual resolution. Much like a pinhole camera, it gave organisms a rough image of the world. As the iris or hole in the front got smaller, the photosensitive cells became more effective at detecting lower amounts of light. And some organisms still have this type of vision using an organ which is commonly called an eye spot. This is how some of the simplest eyes view the world with the ability to make out rough shapes and colors in the area near the organism. Now time for one of the most basic parts of the eye, the lens. This is made by thin fibers and transparent proteins known as crystallines. This plays a major role in how our vision works. The lens allows for much more light to be passed through the iris and provides a large improvement on the resolution of an image projected onto the photosensitive cells in the back of the eye. Here we can see how clearly the lens projects an image on this flat piece of material, but it's not exactly how we see the world. Now that a lens is placed on the front of the eye, we can see how it forms an image on the back. This image is projected onto the retina, located in the rear of the eye. The image for the most part is clear, but it's also upside down. Our brains are constantly rotating this image to correct this. This is much closer to how we actually see the world. Our vision is most defined in the very center. However, our peripheral vision is much poorer, 
The further away from the center of vision an object is, the lower the amount of information about the object becomes. Our vision is an everyday illusion formed by an imperfect image of light projected onto a region of photoreceptive cells. The very image you see every day, the result of billions of years and slow changes, and its amazing yet incomplete abilities, just another reminder of the way nature works over long periods of trial and error over time. As an optical technician, I have a strong appreciation for the sense of sight. Vision is one of nature's best adaptations, and I hope this video has given you a better appreciation for your ability to see the world, as well as an understanding on how it formed. This video was a lot of fun for me to make, and I hope that you enjoyed watching it. As always, stay tuned for more.